Our passion didn't start with a mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness and all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on your tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of people and truly the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, my goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with the other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. I'm Dr. Kelly Tanner, RDH, and today I have with me, we're at the SmileCon event, ADA, I have Petrina Allen with me. Now, I ran into her last night, we were at a Phillips event, and what's unique about Petrina's story is that she's also a dental hygienist. She also graduated from the same dental hygiene program that I, that I went to, and now she's got another side of her story that she's going to tell us today. Welcome. Hi. Hi. It's so good to see you. So we met each other last night. I'm like, you've got to tell your story. You got to tell everybody what you're doing. So what I want you to tell people is kind of what is your story right now? Like, tell us about your path and why dentistry? Oh, man. Why dentistry? That is, uh, and I honestly, I've been in love with teeth my entire life. Um, it was in third grade. This girl came to class with braces on and I was infatuated and I was like, I want braces. And then my parents never gave me braces. I never got them. So then I ended up, I uh, was like, well, if I can't get them, I'm going to put them on other people. And so here I am. Um, so I ended up, went to dental hygiene school because I, there's no dentist in my family. So I assumed that I had to become a hygienist in order to go to dental school. So I started my journey there at ODU and I got my dental hygiene degree. And then um, I was like, a lot of happened in my life and I was just like fine I'll just be I'll stuck I'll stick with being a hygienist like I want to work now school was like hygiene school wasn't the easiest thing but it, I, it was doable you know yeah. and so um so I started working and I moved actually to Texas and then I started working here and um I worked at two offices one in San Marcos and one in Austin and I ended up going to a Phillips Sonicare event I know Dr. Brian Novi spoke okay. and um he had talked about all the things in dentistry, like, like how the things like um, what hasn't been discovered just yet in dentistry. And I was inspired. And I was like, you know what? I'm going back to school. So then I ended up moving back home to Virginia, went back to ODU, took the rest of my prerequisites. And now I am a fourth year dental student at UNLV School of Dental Medicine. How wild is that, you guys? Isn't that awesome? Because every story, every story that someone tells is so unique. So how is dental school going? How has it been? How does it compare to dental hygiene school? Oh, you know what? To me, maybe it's because I've had the background in dentistry already. It was easy. A lot of people struggled. Um, there was a couple instances where, like, you struggled a little. I struggled a little bit, rather. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty easy as long as I had, like, a good studying schedule. Like, we took 30 credit hours every semester our first year. So that's a heaping a lot of studying, a heaping a lot of school, 8 to 5, and then hours outside. Um, and then we had the ugly covid so that put a, like a whole spin on school, but um, it's it's going. I mean, it's doable. I've I've done it. Like I've made it into my fourth year. Um, I have six more months left, and it's just right now. I just feel like I'm cruising. That's that's so awesome. You were telling me last night about the differences. One of the major differences with the hand piece that you yeah. had to overcome. Tell our audience more about that. So as you know, or you may not know, but as a hygienist, when you're working with your handpiece and your foot on the rheostat, 
Um, you can just kind of just hold your foot on the rheostat and then go and um, from tooth to tooth. But as a dentist, you know, you have to make sure that the burr stops because the burr is still cutting. And so if it's still going, you might nick another tooth. And then that causes an issue for, for us. We had plastic teeth. But, you know, like when you're actually in the patient's mouth, you're going to be working on real teeth. You're going to be, you know, making micro tears in the patient's enamel. So you just got to make sure that you keep your hands steady when you're working. So what's your plan after dental school? I am going to do an AGD. I accepted an offer at a, an AGD program um, in North Carolina. So I will be doing that and then I'll take the one year route and then I'm going to hopefully get out and start working um, at an office somewhere. I'm not sure if I want to do private or if I want to do DSO. We'll see where um, everything takes me. Wow. Okay. Has there been one subject or one particular uh, procedure that you love doing so far? When I first started out, so we started in clinic our second year. So but we only do hygiene procedures. And then you can do, if your patient has or needs a restoration, then you can do a restoration on them. Um, but we started out, I think my third year, I was in love with extractions. Um, they're just, it's just a, like, it's muscle, it's brain power. It's like, you just have to make sure that you're, it's a technique sensitive. You just got to make sure you're doing it right. But once you get it and you just feel like, it's a, a feeling you can feel the pop of the tooth and then it's just like it's out and you're just like I did that you know um but recently I've been doing a lot of perio surgeries and those have like been really interesting to see like you just watch it um it's the flaps you get the flap and then you clean everything out and then you sew it back up and then it's just like an almost like an instantaneous healing a little bit um you can see watch the tissues just kind of like sink back in and then you go back it's it's very interesting perio surgeries are very very interesting and I like them a lot so do you think that you'll do those in your practice? Do you think you'll refer them out? What do you? What is your initial uh, gut on that? I'll probably refer them out. <laughs> I don't think I have that much experience with perio surgeries. So actually, like, because when we do them at school, you watch the periodontist. The periodontist pretty much does most of it. But, like, if she'll let you do, like, um, say if it's, like, or osteosurgery where, like, you're um, scaling and replaning. So then she'll let you go in and clean the calculus off, and then um, you can suture the patient back up. But for the most part, when it comes to, like, the cutting and all the flaps, they do that typically um, just because they have a little bit more knowledge of the structures. And it's kind of like, um, we, I mean, we did do, like, a, a lab where they taught us how to do all the cuts and the incisions, um, but I let, let the periodontist do it. I just don't feel that comfortable and that confident in my abilities to do the periosurgeries, but I think they're very interesting. Yeah. When I taught at Virginia Commonwealth University, there was a dental school there. And we used to, the dental hygiene clinic at the time was right next to the AEGD clinic. And so we would have the AGD residents come over and do our checks for us, which was so cool because they got to impart their insight on what they were seeing. And our, our students, the dental hygiene students learned so much from the restorative side. And it was like a collaboration between both that happened. And, you know, they got to learn the hygiene aspects of because in dental school, I don't know how much hygiene you actually get to learn. How many hours would you say that of hygiene that you learned learned in dental school? I mean, probably six. Well, because you have like, uh, we have perio classes. But for the most part, it's, you know, maybe like one class will be specific for like um, hygiene procedures. And then everything else is like hygiene from a dental standpoint. Uh, or like a perio from a dentist standpoint, excuse me. Um, so it's not a lot of um, hygiene that you learn in dental school. It's very, very little. You, I think there was one class where we did probing. And then um, there's the one class where they teach you like the, the basic instruments, like the Gracie's and the scalers. And they teach you like sharpening. But it wasn't like a very in-depth like you would per se in hygiene school. Um, and I tell my, my classmates about it all the time because I have my hygiene background. And a lot of them still feel like they are not that great at the hygiene aspect and like perio probing and stuff of that nature. And I'm like, but we have like hygienists on staff that kind of they're there and they're gung ho hygienists. So like they know hygiene, they've been doing hygiene for years. And so they, it's like a little conflict between our students and our hygienists because it's like the students are like, well, we're not going to be doing this when we get out of here. And so it's like one of those things that I'm like, you guys, it's fine. Like it's, It'll get better. And everything comes with time. Everything, especially with dentistry, it comes with time. So, yeah. But there are those times that you don't know what you're going to be doing if you're going to have to take over pre preventive care for the office for a patient or two, or if you happen to already have them in the chair and the patient is overdue as a dentist and the hygienist is already 
busy with his or her schedule too. So I think it's important. I mean, you can't be, you can't be everything yeah. to everyone. Just like you're saying, you don't know if you'll do every single perio procedure yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> on people if you're going to refer it out. But I think that there, when I taught dental students, I think they were D2s, D2s or D3s. They were like, man, I'm going to appreciate my hygienist so much more because of what I've just learned in this experience yes. and their rotations or however it was that they did at that time. So, um, so in AGD, I know that you learned a lot about uh, implants, uh, advanced procedures. What are you looking forward to the most? Um, just learning how to do different techniques and things. You know, there was this one um, person that said, or one of our professors was like, we just teach you enough so that you don't kill the patient. So <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, you know, every dentistry is subjective, but there's multiple ways to get to the same end result or final product. And so I want to learn different ways outside of school. So that way, you know, I'm more versatile and I can be able to uh, treat people the way, you know, they need to be treated because every in person is an individual and things are, you know, can be different. You know, some person might need composite, one person might need GI, you know, there's a lot of different things. And it's like, I just want to be able to like fully provide my patients with that. Yeah. Yeah, Cause I know some, some folks get out of um, their AGD and they're like, oh, I love this. This is what I'm going to incorporate into my practice. Or they go on to another residency because I think, did you say that your, your residency was a year? It's a year long. Yes. Okay. Cause I know some folks do like two years. It, I guess it depends on the school. Yes, it does. It really does. Um, some schools, they do like a one year and it's just like clinical based. And then the second year is like, if you want to go into education and it teaches you ways to like teach. So yeah, but I'm, don't think I'm going to go into education right now. Maybe in the, in the future I'll think about it. But for right now I sticking with, general dentistry and like working in an office. So what kind of advice do you give to the hygienist who's thinking about going to dental school or who, who wants to be an orthodontist? Because you said you wanted to put brackets on people's teeth. So I'm just sitting here wondering if you're going to go to ortho residency. <laughs> after. Oh, we took, we actually, so we take an ortho class at school and uh, I was like, no, thank you. No, ortho, you know what? The ortho was a lot less dentistry, a lot more physics. Um, so I, like, I know how to put brackets on teeth. I know how to do like the wiring and like the, the things of that nature, bending wires we had to do. Um, and I don't think that I would fully become an orthodontist just because my hygiene background, I want hygienists. Um, I just, I just respect them so much as me being one myself. Um, so with that, I wouldn't go to ortho school, but I would, I like to take like CE courses so that way I can do, I'm um, actually having an Invisalign course tomorrow morning. Um, but so I'm going to do that and maybe even do like a bracket placing class just so that way I can do just small, minute cases of ortho, not really like the major cases. I'd refer those out. Um, but my advice to the hygienist is just go for it. You know, like it's you'll you'll appreciate it a lot more. Uh, you know, it's it's the transition. It will be pretty smooth. Um, but I always just say, go for it. Just take the classes and do it. Especially if you feel like you have the time, if it's something that you're really passionate about and that you want to do, go for it. Awesome. So you said that you're taking an Invisalign class tomorrow morning. That's at the school or are you? Um, it's a WebEx with a line. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So do you all learn, do y'all have, um, Itero scanners at school or how does, how does that work? I don't think we have specifically Itero scanners, but we do have scanners at school. I'm actually wearing, um, my so I just got out of ortho. I was gonna ask who you were wearing because I'm looking at your teeth and I'm like, that looks good. I just got out of ortho. Um, so I'm wearing they did a scan of my teeth and then he just the my orthodontist created my um aligners and so I'm just wearing these. Yeah. So I just we have scanners. Um we also do like um we have to do like milling crowns and everything. So we have 3D printers and everything at school. Wow. Yeah. It's good that they're teaching all the techniques with the um with the 3D scanning and then also AI. Is there any AI with radiographs in the schools now? No, we don't have that just yet. Okay. Yeah, we do We do have a CBCT and we have to play with those and learn how to interpret those and make those, but we don't have AI just yet. Do you think the CBCT is gonna be an important aspect for the hygienist to learn about? Um, you know what? I would say yes, but in a sense that it's, um, it, would be like a sub for radiographs you know like they can do that and it's like a one and done um a lot of the cbct programs you can kind of turn into panos you can like kind of like focus on little things and be like hey 
this is what I see. Oh, look at this defect. It's right here. Um, it'll help you with like anesthesia because you're looking at the nerves and everything and the, the, um, the uh, like the IA canals and stuff of that nature. So I think it's a good learning tool and um, it would be helpful for like all dental professionals to kind of look at and see. Yeah. Cause I, I I've seen so many, well, so much different information about CBCT. And I'm just thinking that, you know, as hygienists, we don't learn a lot about that in school. So how, how beneficial that would be to see periapical pathology that we otherwise wouldn't pick up on at a different angle. I see that as huge because of course, you know, being a hygienist, we don't, in most states, don't have the final diagnosis, but we are always going to be calling out the dental hygiene diagnosis to the doctors and saying, here's what I see that that's different. Yeah. Second set of eyes, basically, you know, like the, you know, when, you know, the doctor comes into the room after the hygiene and they do their check, they don't really, they're not there for that long. And they're just taking like a quick scan of what they see in the x-rays. And so it's just like having the hygienist there, you know, you're ex you're exposing the x-rays, you're, you know, you're looking at them um, with a better eye. I think that it's like, while we can't diagnose as a hygienist, we can definitely put our input out there and be like, this is what I see that looks different. Um, I think you should check in on this. Yeah. Do you think that you can see more on a CBCT than you can bite wings or a pan or FMX combined? Um, I wouldn't say that. It, like you said, like peri, um, like periapical lesions or like pathology, stuff of that nature. I would go with saying that um, because, I mean, every x-ray has their own specific like quality and their own specific purpose. And so, like, I wouldn't say that it would take over for that. I think it would be a good adjunct in conjunction to help see like different things because, you know, uh, you know, you can look at a PA and it'll look like it's above like one tooth and then you go take a CBCT and it's actually spread to a different tooth or it's like wider or, you know, it's a 3D image as opposed to like the 2D image that you get from a radiograph. So it just, it's an adjunct for me. Yeah. I just, I just see it being a part of what the hygienist should be aware of or, or knowledgeable about as a part of their toolkit, just like 3D scanning, just like lasers, just like all the adjunctive therapies that we learn about. So it can help us better treat and better be prepared to treat the conditions that the patient presents with for the office. I would, I would, I would totally agree with that. I totally agree. So, um, so you said for any hygienist who wants to go to dental school, go for it. Mm -hmm. Is there any other type of advice, things that you've learned or some, some one thing that you would say that you have learned through your experience that you want to share with other people that's like leadership or communication? Um, I, you know what, for me, uh, so when I was in hygiene school, I was, I was young, I was fresh out of high school so when I started college and I didn't um, appreciate the networking and like what I needed to do to like make uh, my career or school more enjoyable. Um, now, my second go around with this, I've, I've done a lot. Like I'm the president of a club at school um, and I've just been networking a lot and it's made and it's made my last couple of years at school way more enjoyable. And I think it gives me, like, I've gotten to go to so many conferences. And so it's given me something to look forward to. And so I knew when to do my work and kind of set my goals. And, like, you know, it's, and then I got my reward where I got to go to things like this and, like, get, see new products, experience new things, meet new people. And it's just, like, it's, it's just a great time. Um, and so I just, that is, like, one of the things. Networking is so important for support as a professional, as a human. Mm -hmm. And were you, so you said that in hygiene school, you didn't really network much. You were, I mean, in hygiene school, it's hard because you're trying to establish your study habits. You're trying to figure out who you are because it's a, it's a different time in life. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do all the balancing. But what I found about my profession and my professional journey is that my network is, is truly my, my net worth mm -hmm. because they connect. They're just like, do you know this person? Do you know this person? You got, you need to meet that person. And so they get, they get to know you as a human. And then also too, you're special in your interest. So they can say, you know, who you need to talk to you about that. They can, they can jump you like a chess game, like jump you over yes. wherever it is that you need to be. Is that what you found? Yeah. And I, I mean, you know what, you're going to dental school and you have your classmates, you know, you guys are all going through it. So you guys are like, you know, saying your little things about school, what you don't like, what you do like, and you're just like, you know, sharing your stories. But then when you go to these conferences, you meet other dental students or you meet other like dental professionals and you hear that everybody's going through the same stuff. So it kind of like makes it 
okay. And it's like a reassuring thing where it's like, all right, well, they over here at this school, like I thought I was behind on something, but over here at their school, they're not even doing that. And so it's just like one of those things where it's like, it's comforting. It's, uh, it just, and it just reassures you that, you know, like your things are going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Networking is great. Yeah, it's, and it's, um, what would you say to students like dental hygiene students? Because knowing, like going back, putting yourself back in the time machine, what did, what would you, what kind of advice would you give hygiene students about networking? Um, just stay, you know, a part of the organized industry, the, you know, keep up with your, um, your local components, your state components, just like, just go to every event that you can just meet as many people as you can, because you never know whose story you can hear that will change your life or who's going to hear your story that you're going to change their life. That's powerful. Yeah. So being a member of the ADHA. Yes. So were you, you were a member? I was a member of the ADHA. ADHA. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's. It's the students I teach now at Peninsula, um, Virginia Peninsula, Peninsula Community College, formerly Thomas Nelson Community College. They they are now embracing and embarking upon their professional journey. And they're like, we never knew all of this existed out of the out, out, out of the classroom because you feel you can feel so isolated. You can feel so siloed in what it is that you're doing. But Virginia as a state from the state professional organization, we brought students together from around the Commonwealth on a Zoom call to say, what sage advice would you give them? What should they know at this point? What would you wish that you would have known? And they're like, this is amazing. Because once you once you start there's no other group of professionals that are like you that have sat in that seat, gone through the exact same thing, like just like you, other than your dental network, <laughs> because they've all been, they've all been a D one. They've all been a D two. They've all been a dental hygiene first year student. And so that brings you together in so many ways. It bonds you to say, I remember that here's what I did. Here's advice. And then to be able to find a mentor in the profession. Have you, do you have mentors now? I do. I, um, I have a mentor. I, we meet with him once a month at uh, a restaurant and he just tells us everything that we need to know. He's sent us this whole PowerPoint and we can, you know, look at it ahead of time or we go through and we just talk about everything. And he just gives us advice on like, um, uh, like, you know, owning a practice or like what we should look for in salaries and things of that nature, because it's a lot of things that you really don't think about. Like once you get out of school, you're just like, oh man, there's a lot of stuff. Like, look at all these booths here in this in this thing. Like, these are, are in this in the dental uh, central. Like, these are things that we have to consider, and it's a lot. So it's one of those things where like it's it's good to have a mentor to kind of steer you in the right direction, um, and that goes with like networking and everything. Just being able to have someone that's been there to help you out because it's a it's a hard road to navigate. But when you have that person there to help you, it's it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, to feel, I can't imagine just when you said that, I was thinking about coming to one of these events as a D4 going, oh my gosh, I feel so overwhelmed by all the decisions I have to make and just and running the practice and the people and communication and uh, billing and collections and a all the things. Instruments, like short-term disability, long-term disability, like malpractice. It's a, it's a lot that you have to think about. And it's, uh, you know, it's good to have, you know, like someone that will help you like simplify things and you can figure out like where you want to go. So, yeah. Do you feel like the exhibitors on the floor that you've experienced over the last few years, you feel like they've been helpful um, in guiding you with making some of those decisions too? Yeah. So I, we do, uh, I was actually in charge of lunch and learn uh, at my school. Oh, cool. And so we've had a lot of some of these exhibitors come in and talk to us um, at our school on like a more personal level. And so I've gotten to see them and I'm really, what I was, you know, a second year student. And so now that I'm a fourth year student, it's kind of like hitting home now. So they're going to come back and like, we're really going to talk about, you know, what, you know, is going to help us D4 students, you know, excel when we get out and what we need. And, you know, a lot of them are just really great at like, just um, not only like promoting their, their like product, but kind of like giving you like different viewpoints and standpoints of like other products and be like, this is, I mean, you can go with this or this, but they're just, I feel like a lot of them are just really great and helpful. Yes. Yeah. Because they also were exposed to a lot of people out in the industry who they're, they're gaining knowledge from, so they can pass it on and share it with you mm -hmm. uh, and, and other students and other providers to then further enrich the decisions that you're making. Yes. So that's, yeah, I could see that. 
I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes and, and trying to be here and think about all of the things. And do you, with the residency that you'll be a part of, are you, can you work at the same time or is it full-time residency? It's full-time residency. So it's eight to five, um, but it's going to be in a, it's not a, it's not a classroom base for the most part. It's a community learning center. And so we will be treating patients. Um, I think there'll be like a couple weeks where we're in lecture, but for the most part, we're going to be treating patients in like rural areas. Oh, yes. awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited. That's amazing. Yeah. What a unique opportunity. You're going to see so many, you're going to be exposed to so many different, um, everything, just yeah. everything, the, you know, interactions, the uh, creating context for your understanding. Um, what a, what a great service that you're going to yeah. provide. Well, I'm so proud of you. Thank I know you. so many people are proud of you. Yeah, when she came up to me last night, she's like, I graduated from ODU Dental Hygiene School. I'm like, uh-uh. She goes, and now I'm a D4. I'm like, what? This is this is awesome. Yeah, so I know so many people must look up to you. How do people get in touch with you if they if they want to reach out? Um, you can email me. I do have my Instagram page. Well, tell them what your Instagram uh, is. My Instagram is at Patty K. Bezos. It's not very professional, um, but it's just my Instagram page. It's Patty K. Bezos, B A T T Y K B A E Z U S. Um, and then you can also email me. Uh, you can use my student email. So it's Allen, A L L E N P, the number four, at unlv.nevada.edu. You can reach out to me, ask me any questions you want. I'm pretty much an open book. I like to share my story just because it's, I just feel like it's, I'm such a non, I'm a non-traditional student and, you know, like it's, I don't have like the, the legacy, like the dental family member. And so like I had to kind of like maneuver my way through all of this on my own for the most part. Um, and so like it's a, it was, it's doable. It was a learning curve, but it's doable. I did it. So I would like to share that with other people who, have, who are doing it. That's so powerful. Yeah. Thank you. And then we'll put her contact information in the show notes as well for you all. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's, I'm just so proud of you and your journey. So I um, hope you all have enjoyed our show today. If you wouldn't mind doing us a favor to all of our listeners, give us five stars on Apple and then like us, subscribe us, <laughs> subscribe to share everything. So thank you guys. Be well. Thank you for all that you do out in the community, the publics we serve.